We have the blue Engler player, Maximus, on the left side of the map against the orange Dwarven player, Lukat, on the right side. This is the epic and legendary and famous map for of Eisen, ladies and gentlemen. We have early barracks coming up for Dwarves after the first mineshaft into the Hall of Warriors right off the bat. On the other side, we see two males coming up for the Engmar player, Maximus. Big Boy Glue is in the business. Welcome, Big Boy Glue. And Patsian, welcome, my friend. Good evening. Dimek. Can I get a gifted sub with my 35k cheated mod points? Uh, you know the answer. Don't ask me questions when you know the answer. <laughs> The problem is your 35,000 is not going to become any time any anytime soon less. You know what I'm saying? It's going to always increase. And for that reason, your points are not worth to, you know, are not worth enough to buy this. <laughs> so two males, three males, Hall of the Kingsman coming up for Engmar. On the other side, once again, with a pikeman opening for dwarves. So his second builder is leading right off the bat to the trolley at the top right side. So the plan is simple. That's something we have seen many, many times. Start with pikemen, creep with the pikemen, combine them later on with the guardians and go for the first push. That's like a OG gameplay from the Dwarven faction from the past patches and versions. Uh, Six Link, thanks for the follow, appreciate that. Welcome, hope you're gonna enjoy your stay. So, pikemen, once again, go ham, creep, no problem. Dwarven pikemen are quite beefy and very strong. In Dwarven faction, generally, I think it's a winnable matchup against Engmar when you are playing dwarves because. Engmar is, uh, of course, stronger in late game, but early game, uh, the, Gun the Gundabad warriors and also extra worse, they don't stand a chance against the Guardians. They can't do anything about them. That's why you can also eventually go for the Archer Ranges Dwarves and recruit some extra worse, you know? Hakan of Revere for the Primus for nine months. Our BV Hakan has is coming to the world, my friend. Today is the day. How should we call our baby, you and me? Just resubscribed for nine months. Ahoy. Nine months already, dude. Uh, but it, it feels like I it's been like a couple of days since I met you the first time. Uh, Hakan is also known as Keithbats. He was also participating in this tournament. But he's normally a BFME2 player. But it's always a pleasure from, uh, you know, in, in, in a tournament to see also BFME2 players participating in the Rise of the Witch King event. That's very good. This is going to give us the chance and the opportunity in long terms to host even greater tournaments with more and more players. Okay, so we have a mill coming up and uh, also creeping action for the pikemen from Engma. But keep in mind, creeping a troll layer is more rewarding. You get actually more money from creeping a troll layer in compared to a war player. And Lukat is not going to stop here. He's going to do the same also at the bottom left side. And that's the advantage of this mineshaft. You can literally teleport from one location to the other location in a second. And this way you can be legit everywhere where you are needed. But the thing is, he did not capture this in, which I believe... It's a very good structure for the Dwarven faction because you will get the chance to recruit those sneaky little hobbitses. Really love the things you're doing uh, for this game or the schemes. Always watching the words or stream while eating or studying. Thank you for that. And man, thank you so much for your kind words. I'm glad you enjoy this kind of videos. Really means a lot to me. And once again, thank you so much for the follow and glad to see you in the chat. The mineshaft is going to be slowly but surely taken down by the Skundabad orcs. And they are untouched. The Guardians, they need to reposition. And you can see, right? Positioning and always trying to get into the correct situation is the key. And the mistake you can make, and the first thing that you can actually improve when you are playing this game, is to position yourself correctly. I see many, many times even experienced players like Lukat, who is not a new player to this game. He's playing this game for potentially many, many years. He was participating in even, even in the tournament, the WCS 2019 back three years ago, but he's still doing the same mistake. He right clicks on the open end unit and tries to let the unit handle the situation. But in RTS games, generally, the units are dumb. <laughs> they don't know how to think. They don't know how to use the perfect pathfinding. And for that reason, you gotta, you gotta think for them, you know? You need to get them in a position where you can make sure they are able, every single unit from the battalion is able to attack. The guys in my group keep silent. Will I get um, point tomorrow anyway? Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen you trying to get your games done, and when somebody is not, you know, responding to you, obviously. The, I want to make sure that in this tournament, not always the top two players are advancing. No, I want to make sure that in the tournament, in the round of 16, the most active 
players are able to advance and also reward it. So basically what I don't want to have <laughs> is a round of 16 in which we need to try to organize one single series in a week. You know? And I don't know, man. I, be I believe sometimes I have the feeling that every Rise of the Witch King player is like the president of the United States. You know what I'm saying? You can't be that busy, brother. Come on now. You can't be that busy to not be able to play one single series in two weeks. And if you are that busy, then I'm asking myself, why would you sign up at the first place? Oh my goodness, King Mustafa is going nuts. Mustafa and SSR just gifted five subs. What a pirate. King Mustafa is going nuts. Dudes, Mustafa, thank you so much for the five gifted subs. Didn't see that coming, my friend. Thank you, thank you for the good spot. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Appreciate it. And yeah, look at this going inside the jeans, boys. Look at this going inside the jeans. The Polish brother from DMAC and Maximus is going to call it GG. And that's the first victory in the best of three. And also, hopefully later today, we're going to have also an important series between Mr. Piggy from USA versus Andy San. So we have the blue Mordor player Maximus on the right side against the orange Ingmar player Lukat on the left side. So I believe that's a very nice matchup, which can go either way. And um, I guess Engma's early game is a little bit stronger than the Mordor's early game, but Mordor late game is still crazily strong, yes? Now it's debatable to see, is Mordor late game really stronger than Engma? I don't know, it's hard, Engma is kind of busted with the long shot Felvin combination. I mean, it, it's been like this now in the last versions as well. I believe Felvin is such a unique power point from the Engma faction that you can't really... How are you going to fix that? You know what I'm saying? It's like it's there. You know, it's going to mess you up every single time. And the Wombo combo potential you get from this spell is also net. Like the Felvin Longshot, Felvin Blight, Felvin Drogai's Jump, Felvin Drogai's Splash Damage. Like you have so many different possibility, possible Wombo combos. It's an economical opening, by the way, for Lukat. And it's okay. You can take the risk, you know. When you are 1-0 behind in the best of three, you can go for a risky play. And normally, in most situations, Mordor is playing a little bit more carefully early on, and maybe Engmar is relying on this fact. And that's the reason why we see two, three slaughterhouses, orc pit number one, into the orc pit number two. Now, with four mills, Engmar has definitely the chance and the opportunity to go for a very early and fast uh, transition into the troll and wolf ten, to recruit those wolf riders to trample down all these orc warriors from Maximus. Um... <laughs> Hey, Balinduru! Hey, look at this! Look at this, the Forgotten Sun is returning. So, Orc Pit, Orc Pit, Orc spam early on, boys. On the other side, we see Double Hall of the Kingsman. Actually, no transition early on. What is better, though? I mean, we have experts in the chat. We have Smokey, we have Avi in the chat. What do, you guys is, um, what do you guys think is better in this situation for Engmar? Should he go for the second Hall of the Kingsman and try to compete with the spam of Mordor? Or is it better to build... Instead of the second hall of the Kingsmen, they troll it in Wolf 10. Yeah, I, I believe so also. Wolves are a bit better. So Gundabite Orcs, and look at that. He's even gonna use them for defense. Hmm. That's also pretty interesting from Lukat. Shanks, I love you. Hey man, Dev, I love you too, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. But I'm married, my friend. <laughs> I don't know in what term you love me, but. It might be in a term, I cannot really give you back what you are expecting from me, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, the mill is gonna be eventually still taken down, or at least damaged big time. Uh, pretty close, pretty close. And in the meantime, we get more and more orcs. So, what is the transition for Mordor? He's building the orc pit number 3. So, the age of Gundabad orcs is over, the age of the Mordor orcs has come. No transition yet into the wolf den. Uh, you gotta also keep in mind that every trait is actually going to favor a Mordor because the Gundabad Orcs, they cost 200 each and Mordor Orcs, they cost only 80 each. But quality goes also over quantity and the beautiful part about the Gundabad Orcs is that if you can save one of them, even if they are level 1, they have the chance to recover slowly but surely over time, which is a huge advantage in this matchup. This way you can save money and you don't have to spend money all the time, you know?
1990 just resubscribed for six months. Ahoy. I will ride with you, my captain, till the dead. I mean, first of all, thank you very much, Kuliba, for the for the huge spot, my friend. It's been now six months already, half a year. Appreciate it, appreciate it, appreciate it. it means a lot. And second thing, did you guys just see the Felvin from Engmar? What the heck was that? He literally Felvin did one single orc warrior who was almost dead anyway in the front. And that did nothing for him, you know? This this fight is gonna be won by Engmar anyway. And it was kind of blown away for no reason. <laughs> right you. <laughs> I will ride with you, my captain, until the end. Dude, thank you very much. Really means a lot. Um, 550 command points for Engmar, and we have 400 command points for Mordor. I mean, Mordor is definitely falling behind, and that's not a good good sign. Look at this forest, but the trolls might actually be a bit annoying. I don't like the rocks, though. I gotta be honest, I believe in a situation like that, the trees are going to be the best weapon you can actually equip your troll with. But, uh, you can always, you know, disable that, right? You can always choose the tree later on. The problem with the tree is though, you when you when you pick up a tree, you cannot use the find an orc to eat ability anymore. That's disabled. Even though it's actually not disabled, it's actually enabled in the Palantir. You, it looks like you can click on it, but you actually can't. Or the builder. Which Witch King is better, Mordor's or Engmar's? It depends. It depends on the situation. And Frodo, Bubbly, thank you so much for five months, my man. Thank you so much for the huge support. Really means a lot. Frodo Bublik just resubscribed for five months. Ahoy. All the love for Lotta. And just in case, guys, you missed every donation, every, um, you know, every sub, every bit from the moment of the tournament, basically from the first stream when we opened the charity until the end of this tournament is going to be collected. And at the end, I will donate all this money to the charity. And look who's back on the menu, boys. Peto is back. Peto, welcome back, my friend. And we have hype train going on, guys. Peto Popularis just, just like that. For four months. Ahoy. Hey. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> I mean, Peto is not a man of many words. You know, he's coming in. Hey. <laughs> Thank you so much, Peter. Just in case you missed it, everything is going to be collected, bits, subs, and then at the end of this event, I will be donating it to the charity. We were already able to raise over $500 so far for the charity for the safety children. And that's awesome, guys. Thank you very much for the huge support. And hopefully, we will be able to get the goal of $1,000, which hopefully, we have, we have time, right? We can do that until the end of the spring tournament. And look, it looks, looks like it's gonna be a 1-1 one -one situation, boys. The trolls, they're actually being a uh, huge impact for this game for Maximus. And it looks like Lukat from Poland is going to be defeated in the second game as Engmar against Mordor. Okay. And the trolls are... Sm oh, we have Rogash. Hey, hey, hey. Looks like the king of the trolls is there. The troll king. Trandel. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this, guys. But you need to be level 2, you know, to dominate. Actually, when I think about it, this this hero can be so impactful in this matchup. One of the trolls has been taken down. I believe in comebacks. It looks like Balindru is going ham. Thank you so much, but for 10 bits, looks look like... Look like <laughs> The girl who normally speaks, you know, <laughs> the girl. that is a girl normally, guys, right? He was like, Peto Popularis, subscribe for four months. That is a girl who normally speaks and tells me what's up. But looks like the girl is not interested about speaking of 10, 10 bits from Balindru Chvitanga. I'm really sorry about that, by the way, Balindru. Sorry for that. But for that reason, I will read your message. Right now, right for ruin. Okay, so Rog can you actually steal also the drama troll? I'm curious. I'm curious. Can you do that? I mean, dominate troll, and this is basically a troll. And dude, that would be a big, big brain alert, because Engmar is so Engmar is almost not possible to get leadership, right? You need to get your um, frozen land. So imagine you can steal a drummer troll, and you have like a permanent leadership going on for your army. That would be kind of huge. But you need to be level two, dude. Just kill this lord house already. Don't kill drummer troll. Don't kill drummer. Steal him. Don't kill him. It is Kovmok. Um, he's level 1. Level 2 unlocks Fury. 
Rogash is beefy and tanky. And there was a question about which Lich King is better, Mordors or Angmars, and it depends, you know, it depends because one of them can fly. So he was able to steal this troll. And by the way, the steal is not uh, temporarily, it's permanently. And the second it's available again, you can keep stealing. So maybe at this point of the game, it's not a wise choice for Mordor player uh, Maximus to recruit more and more trolls because they might be actually, every single one of them might be stolen by Rogash. I mean, yeah, he's definitely winning now. Look at that. We have 550 command points for Engmar and 625 for Mordor. Yes, the Mordor player is a little bit ahead in the in the command points department. He has also industry on the slaughterhouse level too. So he's getting some money. But he will have trouble to deal with this Rogash. So he needs to spam now many, many Easter links. Maybe, you know, maybe Gothmog can be a good help. However, Gothmog cannot catch this guy. And he's getting smashed. He's getting bullied. He's getting double penetration from two sides. And... Looks like he's no more. He's no more. He's no more. Oh, one of the trolls has been taken down. Rogash is actually taking so much damage. Maybe it's time to disengage now. Maybe it's time to bail. Looks like he's gonna get in safety just barely. 625 command points for Mortar and 650 for Engmar. And he has actually so much money in the bank that maybe, you know, just call me crazy, but I think Karsh could be also a great hero in the situation, right? Karsh, because he has mainly orcs. And the chill soul can be so effective against that. He's gonna steal now this troll from the lair. Dude, actually, in many in some situations, this ability might be kind of busted. But in many situations, however, it's useless. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, in this specific situation against Mordor, and also when the troll lair is still remaining on the field, it can be quite nice because there is another troll lair at the bottom side. So, you can steal this troll later on as well. And you will get strong creatures every... 60 seconds because this ability as you can see is reloading quite fast i believe it has like a 60 second cooldown almost 10 power points in the bank which can be invested into the white summon into the frozen land or into the orc summon now nah, into the orc summon he didn't even actually he never picked the war chant too he went for the snowbind and after that he went for the fell wind so he did never pick up the war chant which is a major mistake because the buffs are so incredibly impactful in Rise of the Witch King. You don't want to miss that. Like, that's the best 5 power point investment you can make. Buffs like Rylan Cole and Warchan are just too impactful. But level 5, boys. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Do it. Do it now. Jump on their feet. Jump. Go inside the jeans, my friend. Oh, looks like he's actually kind of a coward and running for his life. Turn back and fight. He's, he's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. 11 power points collected. Looks like uh, Engmar will still be able to win this fight. Mordor has now Karsh indeed. There comes Karsh, boys. And what a fiesta, you know? It looks like you want to even see four more heroes. Maybe Morgomir next. Maybe even Witch King next. So he's actually having only one Hall of the Kingsman. Always keeps recruiting more and more Trial Master units, but never makes a transition into something stronger. Doesn't build the second Hall of the Kingsman. Doesn't go for the Wolf Den. He want to actually invest all the money he can collect during all this time to recruit even more and more heroes. He can't go for the Giants. You need to pick a 10 power point before you can go for the Giants. So he can't go for the Giants. He needs to pick a 10, uh, you know, a 10 first. In this case, he needs to pick the Gundabad Orcs, for example, right? So Karsh has also lifesteal. So every time he is able to hit, and you can see he's getting bullied also. He doesn't have too much armor, even though he has a lot of HP. But this information can be boom, sound on your face. There we go from downtown. That's what we like to see in this Saturday evening. Sorry for screaming, by the way, but he was actually... This guy's leap attack animation is so busted. I love the way it looks like. You know, when he's... You just take a look into his model and the way he's jumping. It feels like a slow motion clip from 1980s. You know what I'm saying? But it looks kind of nutty. And he was crushing everything. Level almost 6. Level 7 is going to unlock the Reach of the North. So basically, Bleed Master from Aragorn. 100% more damage. 100% more armor. Look at this army of Extrovers. Dude, what you need actually are only Haradrim Lancers. He has zero pikemen as we are talking. Zero pikemen. So why you would not recruit any of these Haradrim archers? Oh, but he has a Nazgul. A fell beast. Actually, Kamul. But I don't think Kamul is going to do too much. Because keep in mind that Karch has a hidden ability. For whatever reason, it's not displayed. But he has fear resistant. I don't know how many levels does he have. 
Look, you see? You see? He didn't know that! He didn't know that! Karsh has fear resistant, Screech didn't work, and Extrovers bullied him. That's why... Why is not this displayed? Why is this not displayed? He didn't know that! Why? Dude, Karsh has still plenty of space in his PowerPoint thing. Why would you not put a leadership here for fear resistant? That's so lame. That's so lame. He didn't know that.